Hi YouTube, this is LaQueen but I'm live here in Miami, Florida but at the Miami International Airport. I'm going to make a quick, my name is LaQueen Battle. I'm a first aid responder, a certified medical assistant. I am emergency medical adult and pediatric first aid for the city of Boston, for the city of New York, the state of New York, as well as been over 25, 30 different cities. Me and my company and our volunteers have serviced over 1 million people plus media people, presidents, senators, congressmen, all that stuff as well as the National Voting Commission. We have served the National Election Commission. My company and all of our volunteers have serviced over 1 million people plus this plus this year. So I want to thank you to all the volunteers that I've had over at the Battle First and Responder Services, as well as to the city and state of New York, the city and state of Massachusetts, the city and state of Illinois, the city and state of of uh, Tennessee, the city and state of Massachusetts, the city and state of California, the city and state of Washington State, the city and state and capital, and now this now the uh, now a, a, a now a certified state of the United States, Washington D.C. So I want to go ahead and give a shout out to all my volunteers. Thank you again, Hunter. All my volunteers, you guys have great. You guys have done great this summer. They have their businesses, their careers. Everybody that has volunteered with me, everybody that has worked with me, that I've hired as a personal assistant, their lives are doing better. I have one girl who I hired as a personal assistant. She volunteered for me. Now she's in Los Angeles, California, have a great career. All right, I have another young guy uh, who volunteered for me. He um he, he was I hired him as a personal assistant. He is Evan. Evan Cohen, he's doing great. He now has a great job in Boston area. I think he's traveled all around. So great. Thank you guys again. All right, so I'm here in Miami Dade, uh, Florida. The economy, US economy, is Bloomberg Television, is doing great. Congratulations. The US dollar is actually going back together, it's being more up to level, up to par with the rest of the world's economy. So thank you. Congratulations to the United States dollar. Currency, the United States dollar is improving. It's improving with London. It's improving with Canada. It's improving with Switzerland. Now, the main issue that I've got to talk about is fracking. Okay, fracking is a process of drilling underneath the Earth's core to get down to whatever kind of natural resource that that company, that that drilling company, that utility company, that whatever kind of, of instrument they want to get out of any kind of resource out of the ground, okay? Whether it's minerals, whether it's metal, whether it's water, any oil, any kind of, not even gas, natural gas. I'm trying to make sure my, my YouTube is good. Okay, good, my YouTube is good. All right, so all these fracking companies, they most of the time they have these big, huge, big, huge water tanks, okay? They usually have one, two, three water tanks with them. Like, what's the what? Why am I seeing all these water tanks? Because the water tanks are needed to start the process of fracking. Now they, they won't they think, oh, it's just oh, they're just doing some cleaning. No. These companies are not doing cleaning around the cities. They're doing this, and I'm not talking about little bitty um, middle America, middle middle America communities. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. They are not fracking in middle America, mid America. Okay, they're not fr they're not doing a lot. They're, of course, they've already started, but in, in in cities and states like North Dakota, Iowa, Wisconsin, Missouri. They may start it, but right now, these big, huge, major, even these co contractors, even people off the streets, if they can get any kind of mineral, any kind of resource, any kind of metal, you best believe they are selling that metal. And right now, there is a shortage in copper. There is a shortage in the U.S. currency, okay? And coinage, okay. So if if there's a shortage in change, if there's a shortage in coinage, you best believe people will make money off of that that metal that is used to get to make American coinage. Okay, let me guys give you a good example. It's like a big, 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 big. Okay, oh, thank you. It's like a big, big, huge oil 
rush. It's a big metal rush. It's a big, huge mineral rush. Okay, what people are doing is they are trying to drill underneath the Earth's core to get money out of natural resources. And they, sometimes they get approval for it, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you have big electrical, uh, big media telecommunication companies like Verizon and T-Mobile and AT&T that get federal grants and federal approval to start fracking. So that's okay because usually when you have companies like Verizon, AT&T, they always let the public know that they're going to be fracking in their area. That's great because we need to set up fiber cables to start the process. But now you have all of these outside contractors, these little bitty contractors where if they can get, if they can rid themselves a water truck or buy a water truck, they're going to get them a little bitty water truck and they're going to start di drilling, literally opening up, opening up tanks, opening up water sewage channels in major cities and getting away with stealing natural resources from major American cities and the American public does not know about it. It's happening right in front of their eyes. So the ones that are doing the street, all that, all that spraying, all those numbers that you guys checked about in my Instagram, on my, on my Facebook, on my YouTube channel, on my LinkedIn, on my Twitter feeds, all of those postings are being approved, are being done by the major, major companies. What happens is you have the small time contractors who will come in and they already know how the signage works. Okay, they are not doing this approved, they are doing this under the table. And most of the time, they already they can read that lettering that construction companies put down on the ground and pavement. They can read it. And then about 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, when the public is asleep because there's a nationwide curfew of, because of COVID, these little small time crack, uh, contractors, small time crooks, will start open up the sewer channels, dig it underneath the ground, not in people's backyards, and will actually do it on public streets and get away with drilling in public streets, okay? And all of a sudden, you will go down a major street in a major American city, okay? And you will notice, why is there a big hole in a U.S. American city? Why? Because some small-time contractor, some small-time crook, has actually gone underneath ground and has actually digged up the mineral resource, the, me the metal resource, okay, from underneath ground and has gotten away with making thousands and millions of dollars from, this, from these metals. It could be copper, which is made in, in the uh, pennies, okay? There's copper that we use for pennies and there is silver that we use for nickels and dimes and quarters. And yeah, I'm poor, I can't do that. You know what? Yeah, I'm poor, I can't do that. But you'll be surprised because usually if it is an authorized construction company that is doing the fracking, they have their signage, they have their, their company logo on there. They have contracts, they have permits. They even have the cones around. They have secured the area around them to let the public know this area is, sec is secured and blocked off. You have cones, you have ropes, you have signage, you have everything taped all around the area to let the public know, do not go in this area. This area is under construction or this area is being drilled. Okay, now if you have a small time crook or somebody, they can be a white person, they can be a black, um, um, an immigrant, they can be anybody. What they will do is when everybody's asleep, when they have that nine, 10 o'clock curfew, that small time crook will come into the city, he'll be get him one or two or three of his friends, okay? And they will start, okay, when everybody's asleep at night, they'll be on a big old light, okay? And I just saw here in Miami Beach, they had a police car beside them to look like what they were doing was approved, but it was not approved. Okay, because usually when a construction company has approval by the city government, I don't care if it's Miami, I don't care wherever they are, even in Texas, they always have a big old huge permit sign outside of their work truck to let them know that we have this permit, this process approved. It has to be done by 611, 311, 411, and all, the, all of the 111 numbers you can, okay? They have to have it posted somewhere that whatever drilling they are doing is being approved. And you would be surprised how much money, how much millions of dollars these small-time crooks can make off fracking 
fracking whatever they want. They can they can sell cables. They can sell they can sell a uh, metal. And you'd be surprised how much how valuable American changes the metal in a penny, copper. How valuable copper is right now. Copper. How much you can get for the natural copper that's in the ground? How much thousands of dollars these these people make? How much valuable silver is in American quarter? How much valuable the silver is in a, a, an American dime? What these people are doing, and the American public doesn't know that they think it's real construction. It is not regular construction. You have illegal digging going on in major, major American cities. And I was so surprised when I saw it being done on Music World in Nashville, Tennessee, home of the music and in, in that international music industry. It was being done on Music World, home of country country music home of uh, R&B Motown uh, Disney Studios country music Luke Bryan all these musicians and their music studios are being spread on graffiti on all the streets and right right down the block on the left of the block is a big huge water tank and a company drilling on Music Row okay the Music Row district in Nashville Tennessee in Nashville, Tennessee. And now I'm seeing the same thing being done in Miami, Florida. On Miami Beach in Miami, Florida. Okay, right on the street, right in the beach. Okay, on Ocean Drive in Miami, Florida. Right on Ocean Drive in Miami, Florida. Okay, it is illegal dealing. They don't have a time designation. They don't have a permit. And what they do is they pay off a couple cops, give them a couple thousand dollars to let them drill and get whatever they want from that natural core resource of the earth. And usually most of the time they're starting, but they won't clean it up. They'll start the mess, but they won't clean it up. They'll leave a big, huge hole in the ground or they'll leave the huge sewer pipes, the top of the sewer pipes open. And they'll leave in the morning and you have rocks all around the neighborhood, big huge puddles of water all around and they think it's a lake. No, it's not a lake. No, it's not a pond. It's people coming illegally into your neighborhood and drilling illegally to get whatever, make money off of a natural resource. And when they start drilling in the ground, it's going to affect the water pipes. They're going to start busting water pipes. It's going to affect the oxygen level. And whatever comes above, from uh, underneath the ground is also going to come above ground. So if you bring your sewage from down down below, it's going to come up up above the ground, and it's going to affect people. It's going to affect it's going to affect the public. Okay. So that is a huge issue that needs to be addressed. There is and it's not just fracking. Five G yes, five G technology is great. We have companies like Sprint. AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, Metro, all these big, huge, huge, even in Africa, which Africa is now on a huge, 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 huge transformation of mobile technology in the continent of Africa. Africa is on a huge boom of mobile electronics in Africa right now. It's changing the world, what's going on in Africa right now with Africa and technology. I'm not talking about Jamaica. I'm not talking about the Bahamas. I'm not even talking about India. I'm not talking about the Middle East. I'm talking about Africa, what is being done right now in Africa and, tech and mobile technology in the continent of Africa. Okay? In the continent of Africa, what they're doing right now with mobile, mobile communications. Now, a couple of years ago, like five, maybe even three years ago, you were not able to make a call to somebody in Africa. And we have to get a calling card, you have to go to a payphone station, and that person will have to call, you have to set up an arranged time. But now, in the whole entire continent of Africa, from all the way to, to the Sudan in the Middle East, to Egypt on the, west, on the East Coast, even to Nigeria and Chad on, on Chad, on the West Coast, all the way down to South Africa, all the way down, down as low, low you can go, okay, Madagascar, as low as you can go in Africa, now you can actually call somebody 
all over from the continent of Africa, they could pick up their cell phone and you could talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Instead of having to use a calling card, now you can actually make an international call to the continent of Africa, anywhere in the world. That's what they're doing right now with fiber cables. They're putting cables all up around the world, all over the surface of the world. But just because cables, again, cables, there's a difference between drilling, fracking, drilling, drilling cables for communication versus illegally drilling for minerals, okay? When we had the big oil bus, we had the oil bus for uh, oil, we had big oil, the, the boom bus for the natural resources, the railroads, technology, all that with Rockefeller in the early 1900s of the United States. But now it's the same thing, but it's a little bit different, okay? All right, so it's great to have a, a African-American Indian woman of descent in the White House. It's great, yay! But again, the United States is way, way behind the rest of the world. We need to catch up. We need to catch up. We, were, we should have already had three, four women in office a long time ago, just like the rest of the world. So what does that mean for Kamala Harris? What does that mean? That means more women need to take up leadership in the White House. There needs to be more women senators, more women congressmen, as well as there needs to be more international trade, more international relations so we can connect as a global, global citizen of the world. Increase the pregnancy rates, increase health care, increase hospital care, relationships with hospitals, increase business, increase the, the, the financial rates, money, money exchange, all of this. Okay? You have the man point of view and you have the woman point of view. It's usually a different take, but it's the same thing, if not if for better. So, what's going on with the continent of Africa is great. But again, understand though, understand okay if it's legal it has to be done and approved within time by time there's always a time to everything especially if it's a major company like verizon if verizon is going to be doing any kind of drilling in a city or in a country it's going to get approval because why does it need approval because it needs that funding it needs to make sure that everything it does is reported so it get the funding okay so it can get it can get those sales so the public can it can get it can get you know it can get money from what it's doing. If a major company like AT and T, Radio Shack, any kind of these um, uh, any kind of these LG, even these media companies that make TVs, Dell, they still everything they do has to have a tie to it and it has to be approved. Okay, everything that's major companies like this that make this TV, LG, everything and what's in this TV? This TV has chips. This TV has microchips, precious, precious metal that makes these microchips. Apple right now needs that fiber, needs fiber cables in, in Africa. Africa needs Apple. Apple needs Africa. And people really don't even know about it. People think, oh, it's Apple's just the United States and China and, and Europe. No. That's another big, huge, huge, huge um, opportunity for the company like Apple to get into the United States, to get into the continent of Africa. It's a major company like Microsoft and Google to get into the continent of Africa, okay? And what you know about Indians and Africans, if they can find a way to, to jig it and to make it into their own, own product, they will make it, especially Chinese, if they can find a way to remake that product and sell it for themselves, yes, they will. At a cheaper price, they will mass produce it. Especially Indians, especially Chinese, and especially Africans, if they can, and you would be surprised on, P, on, on PBS, you see all those those uh, movies about Indians and Africans making from scratch light bulbs. They make from scratch. They go to they go to schools. They sit in a room, and these teachers teach. These, they don't teach regular young people, they teach women who are unskilled and untrained how to make a chip. Okay, how to make a light bulb, how to make electricity, how to make, to, to, to fuse together wire. And if, if women can make microchips and electricity in Africa, 
Imagine how much we can learn today in the United States. So this is just the first part of my series. We still have a lot to do. Okay, again, understand, if it's in your city, if it's in your community, and you do not see any kind of foreman or a head or a supervisor approving a project, and you see, and you see somebody drilling illegally at 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, you just see some, some guys with a light bulb, and there's an open sewer pipe, call the police, call 811-411, and call them to report these people illegally drilling in your city. And they say, oh, so we're just drilling for fibers. We're just forget. No, they are not drilling for fibers. No, they are not drilling for technology. They are, what they're going to do is they're going to be illegally drilling all night until uh, blasting with their water hose until they can get what they want. They will leave the city early in the morning and they will leave that, that's, that, all of that stuff that they drill in a mess. And the city officials will come by and look at what these people have left behind and how much damage they have done to the city. You can take pictures of it all you want to, but you gotta call the police and you've got to report it, okay? You've got to report it to the city officials as well as to the federal, federal government, okay? That there is illegal fracking going on in United States cities. Yes, it is a big issue, yes, but at the same time, we don't need to stop the fracking. We have to figure out a way to control it. There has to be a legal process to it, and there has to be an illegal process to control the illegal drink, digging, drilling of American cities. Okay, it's not just happening in Midtown America, in Iowa, in South Dakota. No, 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 it's not happening in Oklahoma. It's not happening in, in Texas. It's happening in major American cities where there are already rich people already live there, and the rich people they don't care or they don't know, but they're having illegal fracking being done right in front of their homes and their studios and their places of business. So what does that mean when illegal fracking is being done in, in front of a millionaire, a billionaire's place of business? What does that mean? What does that mean? That what does that mean? That means it's gonna drive that real estate value down. And what it usually happens is a political, political move. If we're gonna have permission to drill right in front of your place of business, we don't care about you and we don't care about your business and we don't care about your city. We're gonna take from your city and we're gonna steal from your city. We're going to get what we want and bring it back to our hometowns because your city doesn't care about the rest of America. And usually when people do it in major, major cities like Nashville, Tennessee, and like Nashville, which is home of white of music industry, Motown, and, and all this good, good Christian country music, and they do it in cities like Miami, Florida, usually most of the time, if it's illegal, Julie, they're trying to make a political, political statement. Especially they're doing it right in front of a major, major million dollar, billion dollar business. And if a major, major million, million, millionaire, a billionaire cannot control illegal uh, digging, illegal drilling in front of his own property, that is an issue. I don't care if it's the city, I don't care if it's the state, I don't care, I don't care if it's the federal government. If a major, major donor or if a major major millionaire or a billionaire cannot control what is even in the vicinity of his own property if it's on his street corner if it's in front of his place of business if he cannot control his own street that is a major that is a major 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 security issue that the united states is dealing with right now the united states is an easy waiting target it is an easy target that people have taken advantage of for the for the for years. How easy it is for us an illegal uh, somebody drilling underneath a million a millionaire's property, and that millionaire's property cannot do anything about it. That is a major major security issue. They come and they start they start they start drilling digging. In a, a billion, billionaire fashion city like Miami, Florida, they bring down their property values, they raise the taxes up, and businesses start closing down like flies. 
businesses start closing down like flies. They leave this city and the city is left with empty, empty buildings. And major, the leaders, mayors and governors and senators cannot figure out how do the, these major businesses leave our cities. It's because you refuse to put a stop to what was going on on the street and then it came into your, it came into your political life. All right, so this is the first topic of my discussion. My um, my YouTube is about to die. Let me go ahead and end this because my YouTube feed is about to die.